Hello, in this video I'm going to answer some of the questions people have been leaving in the comments section under the videos about Chris Watts. So I'm going to answer them quite randomly in no particular order. I had so many questions, if I don't answer yours it's not because it's not a great question, but I, I will have missed some of them unfortunately because I think already there's too many to put in one video. But there are some questions by someone called g to g some really good questions, so there are three from this person, so one of them. Um, so number one, Chris was a narcissist but so are many people. Why did he murder his family? The final discard didn't have to be murder. What was different in this case than other narcissistic relationships that led him to murdering his family? Well, what was different is that Chris Watts is not just a narcissist. I would say that he's also a sociopath. And so that means that the final discard, which I've talked about in other videos, um, that a narcissist will do, um, it will be a lot more brutal for a sociopath because the difference between a sociopath and a, narciss a narcissist who isn't a sociopath is that uh, at some times someone who is just a narcissist can feel some degree of empathy uh, when it suits them, you know, not, not when they feel ashamed because everything still revol revolves around them and how good they feel about themselves. Um, but if they're feeling, um, if they're not feeling bad about themselves and, <clears throat> and if they don't feel threatened then they're able to have some degree of empathy, whereas a sociopath doesn't empathise at all. Because they're more damaged, that narcissistic supply depends on uh, more, you know, they, they, need, uh, they need people to have more emotion in order for them to get that, um, that uh, narcissistic supply. So for example, for Chris Watts, he needed people to really, really like him. You can see how hard he finds it if people are judging him. So, you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, the bar is high for him. And uh, so he needs people to really, really like him. And I think that when he uh, caused pain, it needed to be severe. So that's why I think the final discard for him would have been much more drastic than the final discard for uh, a sort of garden variety narcissist. And I'm going to make videos about this in the future, so it's, you know, it's something that I'm going to talk about further, is the difference between someone who's just a narcissist and a sociopath and the difference in how they behave. A covert narcissist, uh, because he's behaved like a nice guy for so long, I think that his rage would have been bubbling away for a very long time and that it would have taken more for him to get relief from it and a sense of, um, of power. You know, he would have had to have uh, caused more pain uh, to have felt that power that he needed and to have just completely got rid of his family so that he didn't feel um, uncertain about whether he'd made the wrong decision or anything so that he could relax and not look back and that's something I've also talked about in previous videos. In your opinion what specific role did Nicole Kessinger play? Did she imply murder without telling him to murder the family? How much did she know if this was indeed premeditated? Um, okay, so for this one I can give my opinion. I'm obviously not a detective, you know, so I can, I can just give my opinion on the interviews I've seen with Nicole Kessinger and my overall impression of her and the role she played. So, um, my impression of Nicole Kessinger is that she's somebody who um, likes to be... Um, quite quite controlling in a relationship and that she would have been under the impression that she was in control in her relationship with Chris Watts when of course she actually wasn't because he was just telling her all of these lies about how he was divorcing Shanann and and so on um, and so I do think that when she was uh, you know trying to find him somewhere to live and so on uh, I do think that her feelings 
would have affected him. We know that Nicole Kessinger didn't want to be with somebody who already had children. You know, she told one of her friends that wasn't the ideal situation for her. And I think she even admitted that to detectives. So, uh, so I think that would have affected Chris Watts because he has a need to be adored, you know, and for everything, for people to think the very best of him. So I think that that would have affected him because of his own um, issues. That there'd be other men who maybe, even if they knew that about their partner, about their new partner, that they knew that they were not in an ideal situation for them, that wouldn't be such a big problem because they wouldn't have such a need to be seen in this perfect light. But for someone like Chris Watts, um, that would have put pressure on him. So I think he would have felt under pressure to be um, perfect in Nicole Kessinger's eyes so that he could feel like he'd really sort of sucked her in. So when she was looking for somewhere for him to live, I think that he, um, he would have felt that pressure that she was keen for him to find his own place. And um, so I think in that sense, she, you know, she would have, influenced him but she the way that she was uh, a pushy wouldn't have influenced somebody who had a strong sense of self and wasn't like Chris Watts you know my feeling about her is that she felt that you know she felt very flattered about the way that he felt he seemed to feel about her and she felt that she was in control and she felt quite high from the power of that. That's the sense I have. I don't think she was somebody who had um, much empathy. I think the way she behaved in the police interviews was disturbing to me because she didn't seem to be affected particularly by the fact that this guy had just wiped out his family. She doesn't talk about that and she doesn't seem traumatised by what he did to his family she behaves in a very normal way. So there's something about her that I find um, cold and disturbing, but I still don't believe that she was the mastermind behind any of this. I think that he would have been doing everything he could to come across as this perfect nice guy to her, rather than um, divulging the kind of horror he was thinking of committing. And I think that Despite the fact that I, I feel she has a real lack of empathy, that doesn't mean that she's somebody who would go along with murder. I do think she was hiding stuff. You know, she wasn't being completely upfront and honest. But I don't think that she was hiding a murder plan and I don't get the feeling from what I know about Chris Watts that he would have had an accomplice um, and confided in Nicole Kessinger. I think he would have been too busy trying to pretend to be this really lovely guy with her and blame um, Shanann for, for the problems with their marriage, you know. And that's what she says, and it's also the way that he, he behaves generally. He will blame whoever it's useful to blame. So he'll quickly turn against Nicole Kessinger now and, and talk about how she was bipolar, talk about uh, her vulnerabilities in a way that feels like it's full of contempt rather than sound like a loyal um, person to her. If she had been involved, I don't think he would have hidden that she was involved at all. He's already shown himself to be quick to, um, to show someone else up as long as it frees him of responsibility. So I think if Nicole Kessinger had been involved, uh, Chris Watts would have made that clear and tried to limit any responsibility and blame her for it. Was him listening to the song Battery a sense of delight and celebrating his actions? If so, that's a very strong statement. That suggests he enjoyed murdering his family. And if we can say that, then who's to say he wouldn't murder again given the chance? Is that what you're proposing? Yes, I think he did enjoy murdering his family. I think he got narcissistic supply from doing it and that he, you know, a real sense of power. He felt really important, um, free, uh, and that he had won. That's, that's what I think from everything I know about Chris Watts. So uh, would he have done it again? Yeah, why not? I, 
think we, you know, we can see what he's capable of, so why wouldn't he do it again? I don't think he would be someone who would um, go around killing random people, and I think that he would do it when he was ready for the final discard, when he'd met somebody else. Um, so there's no, re I, you know, really, I think there's no reason why he wouldn't have murdered Nicole one day in the future. I think from what we know about what he said about killing Bella, um, this is, I, I, I guess this is assuming you believe his version, um, but when he was, when, you know, he said that Bella had said, are you going to do to me what you did to Cece? And he said he didn't know if he, um, he didn't know if he was horrible and said yes to that. That shows us the state of mind he was in when he killed them and that he enjoyed her asking that and her suffering and her fear because if he didn't enjoy it then it wouldn't have crossed his mind that he would have um, said to her yes I'm going to do the same to you. You know, so we get a real sense of that. There's lots of things that give me an impression that he enjoyed what he did. For example, sending that photo of the doll to uh, Shanann um, and uh, throwing that book in the bin. They're all senses that he was enjoying uh, rubbishing her, basically, and, um, and relishing in the thought of what he was going to do. Lisa Marie Lund, um, she says, did Chris Watts give Shanann any signs that you are aware of that he was a potentially deadly narcissistic personality? What should young women be looking for when they date somebody and are, you consi and are considering marrying somebody? I think that there are different things you can look out for and that this really deserves a whole video. So it's hard to give it the answer it deserves. It's such a good question and it's such an important question. So, but what I will say is that the way that their relationship began, Shanann was feeling really vulnerable and, uh, and I'd say that it's not a good idea to go into a relationship or to be dating when you're feeling vulnerable because um, narcissists are attracted to vulnerable people and vulnerable people are attracted to narcissists. They're like um, magnets, you know, because there's a, a sort of um, there's a there's a sort of hole inside somebody who's feeling vulnerable that needs filling, and a narcissist can fill it. They can they can behave as if they're filling it, and that can be very attractive to somebody who needs that hole to be filled, and very attractive to a narcissist because they can see that this person's going to be easy to take advantage of. So uh, so that's the first thing I'd say. Shanann talks about how she lay on Chris Watts's lap for two or three hours, I think, and that that was a great sign about how caring he was. I would say that that is a red flag that he that he sat there for how, you know for two or three hours and didn't move while she lay there. And the reason I'd say that is because he didn't yet know her. This was a uh, very early on. I think it might even have been their first date or if not, it was very early on. And so I'd question what's in it for him. Why is he giving so much so soon? You know, so that would be, I think a red flag is if somebody seems to not really have boundaries in that way, you know, um, sure later on when you're you know when you know someone very well then you know that's a completely different thing but when it's early on in the relationship if one person is giving and giving to quite an extreme degree then I think that that is a warning sign and it doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to turn out to be a covert narcissist it might just be that they're a very dependent kind of person but either way it's not really a healthy dynamic so, uh, so I think that's something to watch out for. If we look at the beginning of his relationship with Nicole and he's sending all these cards, writing these things that are really deep, or, or of course they're not, but you know, they come across as really deep, talking about uh, their future and so on, and all the first they're gonna have, and he was booking this weekend away, buying her jewelry, but it was all within a very short space of time. So that's a red flag as well, because a covert narcissist is in a really big rush to pin the victim down, you know, and so they're, they're sort of 
going to really uh, put on this great show of being this absolute hero in someone's life and then they will uh, wait until they've got the trust of that person and until they've become dependent on all of that good stuff that they're getting and once the victim is dependent then the narcissist has control and that's when it becomes dangerous so those are the red flags i think in this situation that we can that we can see we don't know the ins and outs of their relationship so you know it's hard to point out much more than that really we know that he was abusive towards the end and that shanann didn't tell her family about exactly the way he was behaving so we don't know how often that was the case in the past we know from chris watts that he had um that he'd shown rage before we don't know how often so you know it's really hard to to comment and to really understand exactly what was going on and when he was showing his true colors in their relationship you know how often that was happening but we know as well um when i say we know what i mean is the information is out there you know from the documents that were released to the public um but she went to see a lawyer you know not not uh not in a professional way, you know, she, she, so she didn't go to see him in that way, but she met him, she happened to meet him in a restaurant, but she was asking for his business card and she was asking for all the ins and outs of uh, custody of children in a divorce. And that was back in, in April, I think, or March. So that suggests that there was something going on sooner than we know about in their relationship. You know, and a lot of the time a victim will keep things quiet and try to safeguard the relationship from other people's judgment. So and she was always boosting Chris Watts on Facebook and so on. So my impression is that things would not have been as rosy as she wanted us to think they were. I think it's unlikely that he really was this, you know, really did behave like a perfect ideal husband right up until the end. And, you know, she wrote a message to someone, to one of her friends as well, saying that he was very selfish and he only thought about himself. And that was quite a general statement about the way he behaved generally. So that suggests it had been going on for a while. So if I knew more about their relationship, then I could use it. It, could be, it would be much more helpful because I could use it to point out other red flags. But unfortunately, we don't have all the details. OK, so the next question. Prisma Domine writes... He wasn't in control though, just not in the sense he's claiming. People like Chris have zero agency, they're complete slaves to their impulses. LAF, interested to hear your thoughts. I don't agree, I don't think he was a slave to his impulses. I think if Chris Watts was a slave to his impulses, he wouldn't have pulled off um, this nice guy act for as long as he did. People would have seen straight through him because of his behaviour when really he managed to uh, play the role of a nice guy and a good dad well enough for people to buy into it. So I don't think that that's true. Um, I think that the murders were premeditated from all the information we have and that he knew exactly what he was doing. And I've said that he acted on his rage, but... Um, but that doesn't mean he wasn't in control, you know. He was in control of that rage and he chose the timing, you know, he chose to act on his rage at that point. But even though he wants us to believe that he was just completely out of his mind, I, I don't believe that at all. Second question that she, the same person asks, what do you think about the fact that he killed the younger child in front of the older one? Do you think his intent was to torture her or do you think he just didn't care which one he got rid of first? Sometimes you sound like you think he didn't care about their experience but then you do also mention that he did it to torture Bella. I think in that case he would be a sadist and not just a narcissist. Was there any significance to the order of the killings? So for that I would say that yeah he and I think that he would have killed Cece first. Um, a big part of that would have been for practical reasons because uh, I think Bella was a lot easier to manage and would have just sat there. Um, she was, you know, Cece was much more extroverted and, um, 
you know, I think she would have made a big fuss and, and been a lot harder. It would have been a lot harder for him to have killed Bella while at the same time as controlling Cece. So I think that would have been, I think a big part of that would have been for practical reasons. This is of course assuming his version of events is true, which I believe it is, but I know that a lot of people don't, in which case I guess this question would seem irrelevant to, to you. But yeah, so, but in answer to the rest of the question, I think it was partly practical. When I said that, yes, he didn't care about them, I'm, uh, you know, so because she's saying that on the one hand, uh, you know, was he torturing them? On the other hand, I'm saying he just didn't care about them, which is different. But I think both came into play. I think that a lot of it was practical. So I think that he took them in the car because he had, um, because Shanann had come home late and that his priority would have been to bury Shanann. And that it just, she, in, in his eyes, she needed to be under the ground before his colleagues arrived. Um, that was the main thing. And that then, uh, as soon as he killed the first one, Cece, he then immediately also um, got rid of her body. So I think it was, in his mind, all about getting rid of the evidence as quickly as possible. And I know he left evidence out there, but that's quite different, I think, because nobody, if they weren't looking, nobody would have seen that evidence. It was further away in the long grass. Um, but yes, I also think that he would have enjoyed torturing Bella. So obviously a very horrific thing to think, but I do think that that's true based on everything we know about Chris Watts. Uh, and also his own admission that she had said, are you going to do the same thing to me? And what I've said earlier in this video about how he, um, we know the mindset he was in, that he considered saying yes, you know, that he enjoyed her pain. Uh, he didn't know anything about her mouth injuries, he hadn't inquired about them, which suggests to me he really didn't care at all. And um, yeah, so, and I think the fact that she had these injuries means it was a very brutal, um, he killed her in a very brutal, forceful way, you know, and that he was feeling this rage and was enjoying it. So yes, um, she says that he wasn't, that would mean he was a sadist and not just a narcissist. Well, yes, I think he was a sociopath. I think he is a sociopath, so he isn't just a narcissist. So I would agree with that, that he would get off on somebody's pain. Like a Thunderchild says, thousands have signed a petition to have his photographs removed from his prison cell. Um, and then she's, she's saying, do you think he honestly would care if that petition's successful? If they remove the photographs, would he actually care? Or is it just for show, to show that he, um, a show of remorse? Or is it really important for him to have the images with him? I would say it is really important because they're a reminder of, um, of lots of things for him, of the way that they loved him. So that would make him feel good because that's narcissistic supply. So just from looking at those photos, he'd get a feeling of narcissistic supply from remembering uh, Shanann's desperation when he was killing her, um, the power that he had, how much she needed him. That would all be giving him narcissistic supply. Um, the way that the children would have looked up to him because he's a grown up and he's their dad, you know, uh, Bella singing that lovely song, you know, they would remind him of all of these times when he felt good about himself because they all needed him and loved him, basically. And also, I would expect that he will also be getting narcissistic supply from remembering killing them. This is a really interesting question from MK, who often writes interesting uh, comments, I think. So this one is, uh, th this person is asking, what do you think about the men and women who are helping blame the women in Chris Watts's life. I think um, I think this is a common thing that happens when women are killed in society. Uh, it's very common for people to blame the woman, uh, and that's what we're seeing here. So there's 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 so much hatred for Nicole Kessinger, for example, um, and there's also a lot of hatred for Shanann. And I understand, of course, you know, Nicole Kessinger was having an affair with someone who was married and had a family, and a lot of people are going to feel really uncomfortable about that. 
and also we've got the fact that she didn't seem concerned particularly in the interview about about his family that had just been murdered so I can see why there would be um, a lot of sort of negative feeling towards Nicole Kessinger but the extent of it in terms of the murders you know what I find quite interesting is the way that very often people seem to actually have more anger towards her than towards Chris Watts who actually murdered his whole family and I think that this is a common thing that people will assume a woman is behind it or that it's somehow the woman's fault and I think Chris Watts has really helped people to have that feeling because he's behaved like he's this nice guy and a lot of people have bought into that um, again with Shanann people have um, sort of I think created a caricature of Shanann as being you know much more bossy than she was you know the things that she said in jest that were teasing uh, Chris Watts. Some of them, some people might find a bit offensive, but I think people also made those really big, uh, you know, and, and talked about her as if she's a really abusive person who, who constantly humiliates Chris Watts. Um, so in both cases, the, the women are given a huge amount of power uh, and uh, in a really negative way by a lot of people in the public there is still a lot of hatred towards women uh, narcissistic people tend to hate women whether they themselves are men or women they tend to uh, have a has a, a really strong um, judgment towards women uh, so I think that there's a, a very big uh, part of it is that um, but I also think that this is something that's deeply entrenched in society to think that women would be responsible for their own murder, for instance. You see it a lot in the British press as well when a woman's killed and um, by her husband and it says something like how you know, she had been having an affair and had made him feel bad about himself or there was one lady who was, um, she was bisexual and she'd been uh, she'd been, um, I think she was having an affair with a woman and that was really um, seen as this absolutely evil thing that she was doing and it, I just found it quite bizarre the way that she was really seen as the bad guy when she'd just been murdered by her husband you know and um, I think yeah just people do seem to blame the woman it's just something that's in our society is just this way of looking at women. I think you can look at it really as a sort of narcissistic trait that is entrenched in our society, this way of viewing women, you know, this sort of um, to be quick to be jealous f from other women, um, to put the woman down, to um, that, that women um, is, for example, if you know, there's this horrible thing where if a woman is raped, what she's wearing suddenly seems important to, to people, which obviously it's completely irrelevant to whether she was raped or not. But it's, there's, there's, you know, and if someone's murdered, were they having an affair? And of course, in this case, Shanann wasn't having an affair, and yet, and he was the one having an affair, and yet still, Shanann has been the one looked at as this really abusive, horrible woman, you know, even though she's clearly the victim. So, I would say that yes this is a sort of narcissism in society that um, a, a sort of hatred of women and a need to degrade women not just by men but also by other women so I'm going to leave it here because this has gone on for quite a long time and I'm going to continue to answer your questions in the next video um, so uh, if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video